What's up everybody, my name is Jake Herr. Uh, my lesson plan is going to be how to rig a lure onto a hook and then how to uh, tie that hook onto a line for fishing. Hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll have a better understanding of fish, um, the wildlife aspect of fishing, uh, when to use fishing, and ultimately how to just rig a lure on a line. So there's a couple different scenarios that people can fish in via like a recreational scenario or a uh, survival scenario. If somebody's hiking and they get off the beaten trail, um, they could be stranded for a couple days, um, not knowing where your next meal is gonna be, running out of food. Um, so fishing can really uh, help you get food, um, help you have a better chance of surviving and finding somebody, or just um, having a recreational fun, uh, which is the other scenario. So um, fishing is very popular in all of the 50 states um, all around the world. There's all different kinds of fishing and it's kind of what you make of it. And I think that's the beauty of it. Um, I'm going to be teaching my lesson on kind of how I see the uh, fishing and how it works for me and what I've discovered for it to work for me. Other people could have different opinions, but this is just what I've known and what I've seen. So uh, to start off, uh, it's important to have the correct equipment. I cannot stress this enough. Um, I'll kind of go into deeper with the hooks and the lures after. Um, but the general equipment for having a suitable rod for the fish that you're going for and suitable test of line, which is the pounds that the line can hold without snapping. Um, it's very important. Uh, you need to understand the fish. For example, if you're going for a trout, um, that's not going to be that heavy or that big. You're not going to take a huge bass rod or catfish rod. Um, you're just not going to have the uh, bigger chance of catching a fish. Um, it's important to, and then vice versa, if you're taking a small rod, uh, like a trout rod, and you're going to be going fishing for catfish, and you were to get one on, um, it would just snap your line, snap your rod, and that could have been dinner uh, right there. And you could have not had a better chance of catching a fish until right there. And then before you know it, um, you're stranded again. So also, you want to have a stringer, fillet knife, uh, pliers. Pliers because some fish have teeth, like a walleye or a pike. If you were to catch one, you cannot reach in their mouth because you'll get bit. Um... So it's important to have pliers to reach in and take that hook out. Um, also, I cannot stress this out enough, is that you need a fishing license in whatever state you're fishing in. Uh, it's important to legally do it the correct way. Um, I have a fishing license in not only PA, but Maryland as well. Um, it's very important to legally do it because you will get fined by the Boat and Game Commission if you don't. Um, as I discussed earlier, it's important to have uh, different lures, different hooks uh, strategically set out for the fish that you're going to be going for with the lures. Um, first, you just have to know what kind of fish that you're going for. So it would be the bottom feeder, trout, bass, they're all different popular kinds of fish. Bottom feeder could be like catfish where you use like a dead bait, um, even live bait, or um, hot dog. Um, they'll normally eat anything. Uh, you're not going to be using that same type of bait for like a trout or bass. Trout would be something smaller, like a rooster tail with a spoon that would be flipping through the water. Um, corn, um, bass would be like a twister tail. Uh, that's my uh, specific uh, favorite that I'll be using. Uh, twister tail, what I'll be teaching later, kind of looks like that. Very common, uh, very popular as well. Have had a lot of success with that. So um, it's also... Uh, important to understand what kind of weight you're putting on because uh, different fish uh, live in different uh, levels of the water. For example, like a bottom feeder, you want to put a lot of weight on so your lure will sink the entire way to the bottom because that's where those catfish are hanging out. Uh, they're eating stuff off the bottom. So if you're going for a catfish, uh, you want to make sure you have the correct weight. Um, but if you're going for like a uh, bass or something else as well, which would be in a higher water level, you don't want that lure to sink down too much. So um, it's important to find the correct hook is the uh, next piece. Uh, again, you want to have a hook that would not be too big or too little for the mouth of the fish. You're not gonna have a hook that's this big for a little trout. Uh, they're not gonna be going after that. They're gonna look at it, probably not even look at it as food. Uh, they're probably just gonna keep swimming past. So to maximize your um, percentage of catching a fish, 
uh, you want to make sure that you have the correct hook as well. Um, understanding the correct hook size is very important. Um, a lot of people overthink it. Um, I'd say a standard hook for the most part, um, something around the size of this um, jig head would be fine. Um, the weight on the jig head, this um, serves that I don't have to put additional weight up on top of the line. Um, this will sink um, throughout the water and allow me to cast out further because of the weight. So it so serves multiple purposes. Um, by changing the size of the jig head, uh, you can get the lure in uh, deeper water uh, to get sink further. Um, I know specifically different types of fish that would go after like a twister tail on a jig head live in different levels of the water. So um, if you want to be specific and get into it like that, you can. But ultimately, just a standard jig head and the hook would work. Um, so to get into the actual lesson of what I'd be teaching, uh, how to be putting on the lure onto the jig head and then tying that onto the line. So um, this lure, uh, this color, uh, is going to be like a chartreuse. I think that this is a very good color. Um, I've had a lot of success with this color. I matched it with the jig head as well, like a lime green. Um, a lot of fish are attracted to it. It's bright in the water. A lot of times the water would be muddy, dirty. Um, so this is bright going through the water and it can attract the uh, fish's attention. So you want to grab your hook grab your lure and you want to make sure everything is symmetrical throughout this process because fish are very smart and if they're looking at the uh, lure flopping through the water and it doesn't look lifelike they're not going to swim at it and they're not going to go after it so it's important to make it look as clean and as nice as possible so ultimately you're just going to take your hook pop it right in the middle slide it through and notice that the edge of the my hook has not come out the side yet it is still inside I'm gonna push it down until I get to the very end of the flat part on the hook also it's normally around the edge of the body or the end of the body of the jig twist your tail and this little stopper here serves a purpose as you slide up the jig head that it will not slide back down. Because a lot of things in the water, um, tough current, uh, if you're hitting a rock uh, or just a fish on the line, uh, can pull your lure down and you don't want that. So as you can see, very symmetrical, right in the middle. Uh, as it will flow, the twister tail will spin. Um, going on to tie, this is going to be a double improved clinch knot so feeding this through the eyelet this is a six pound test uh, this is what I use very common for bass uh, you won't really catch many bass that are above six pounds if you do uh, please tell me where you were fishing uh, so I can fish there as well <laughs> but so you want to feed through put your finger over top kind of loop it around the the end loop it around so you kind of have a loop around your finger like that and then you're just going to twist it twist it around the end where you made that loop five to seven times just keep going and then if it slips out just keep going five to seven times so you're going to have this it's going to look like that and then you're going to feed the end back up through that loop where your finger was. And ultimately, you're just going to pull either side through and it's going to make a knot. It should just look like a bunch of wraps going through. It's important to then trim off this extra, this excess. Um, I personally bite it. A lot of people will cut it because fish are smart, like I said before, and if they see anything that's out of the ordinary uh, with the lure that 
just doesn't look like it should be naturally swimming in the water, they will not go for it. So right here, here's the lure um, on the improved clinch knot. Uh, this is what I personally would use for bass fishing. Uh, you can also get a walleye on it, a bunch of different pan fish as well, like sunnies, um, different fish like that. So this would be a very good bet to catch uh, different fish if you're just tossing something in. I would recommend a twisted tail with a jig head, no weight. Um, right here is what you would use. Pulling on this, pulling hard, that knot is going to be holding. Uh, so they'll be confident if you have a fish on the end of the line fighting uh, within the pounds of the test of your line, you'll be able to, to bring that fish to shore and hopefully uh, that could mean for dinner uh, if you're stranded or if it's just for recreational, you get to pop the hook out, throw them back, let somebody else catch them. Um, just to run through about what we went through earlier, uh, there's uh, it's important to have the different uh, correct equipment. If it's a suitable rod, line, um, your license as well, um, to know what kind of lure that you're using for the different fish. For example, with the bass uh, that I showed, uh, twister tail with a jig head works perfect um, also finding a hook that's a size that's suitable for that fish to go after uh, and you don't want a huge hook that's going to be poking out that they can see uh, you want something that blends in is moderate to the size of the lure and then um, just putting the lure up through making sure everything is symmetrical and then um, tying the improved clinch knot uh, that is very simple. Just ultimately looping up through, wrapping it five to seven times, feeding it back through that hole that your finger made and tying it through, biting off the excess end. Um, the more you do it, practice makes perfect. It makes it a lot easier. Um, hopefully that you guys have discovered something new today. Um, I personally really like fishing. I think it's a lot of fun. I learn something new every single time I go out. Uh, hopefully this will spark your interest and um, get you out uh, fishing and discover something new. Or if you already like fishing, fishing, hopefully I taught you something new and you can implement it to what you're doing. So hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in.